Uh, can you please confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, Doctor. We can see your screen. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, dear participant, I'd humbly request you to please uh, keep yourselves muted um, for the moment till we have the question and answer out. Let's just wait for two more minutes to 7.15 and we'll begin. Um, the door just, um, we can't see your screen if, just wondering if that's a deliberate attempt or. Um, our guest today, Dr. Mohammed bin Shams, uh, is here with us. He is an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering at Jamal Bahrain. He holds a bachelor's from Chemical Engineering Jamal Bahrain master's in instrumentation from University of Manchester and PhD from in chemical engineering with focus on uh, control and applied statistics from Waterloo. Prior to joining Academia, he's uh, worked at Yokogawa from which he's got, gained hands-on experience with industrial automation and data management software. His research interest and publication falls into general area of process system engineering and in particular application of multivariate statistics and machine learning. Um, just a few instructions before I hand over the floor to Dr. Shams, please, throughout the um, seminar workshop, keep yourself muted. Um, humbly request you to not bother the doctor with the questions during the presentation. Just in case you aren't comfortable to voice your um, questions, you could place them in the chat and I'd bring it out to Dr. Shams at the end. And of course, um, that's just in case you're uncomfortable asking questions up straight. Otherwise, the question answer around your free to questions. Um, other than that, just to give you an idea about the time scale, we, we expect the presentation to be about 40, 45 minutes, um, following the question answer round with about 15, 20 minutes, anticipating this whole uh, seminar to be about an hour, just to give you an idea about this. Um, over to you, Dr. Shams. Uh, before that, Mr. Faisal, thank you very much. Just uh, uh, introduce, introduce myself. My name is Hussein Halwachi, the Vice President of uh, Bahrain Society of Chemists. Thank you for having all of you here. Uh, just one thing uh, my brother Faisal, he missed. Uh, there'll be a certificate of uh, attendance. Anybody want certificate of attendance, please uh, write your name. Uh, and your email in the chat and later we will communicate with you and we will, we will send you the certificate of attendance. Uh, Back to you. Thank you very much, Hussein, for covering that for me. Thank you very much. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Over to you, Rupert. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, could you please just confirm again that my voice is clear? Yes, your voice is uh, perfect. Okay. Good, alhamdulillah. 
first of all, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, it's my pleasure today to be here with you guys, uh, especially with uh, the Bahraini Society of Kansas. It's a pleasure to uh, participate in their activity. And inshallah, in Konya, any uh, added value uh, to all the members and uh, the participants, as well as our students who are also attending today. Um, the title of the, of, I'll try to mix between Arabic and English, since I don't know how many non-Arabic speakers here. But I'll try to mix between Arabic and English, the topic kind of is a uh, 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 not uh, smooth, however, we'll try our best, inshallah, to make it an attractive and uh, 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 valuable uh, presentation. Right. Without any uh, delay, let me start right away and tell you what is my aim today. Uh, Hussain, uh, Mr. Hussain Halwachi told me that I have only 40 minutes uh, to deliver something about AI. So um, artificial intelligence. So I'll try to, uh, during this 40 minutes, to, to give you a talk that, inshallah, serve as an eye-opening uh, experience to this subject. And yani, what I'm going to do is I'm going to emphasize on some of the keywords, um, uh, trend, chemists and chemical engineers, how we uh, harness uh, this AI uh, في, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so my agenda today is we'll start with talking about what is AI, artificial intelligence, why people and why us has to focus on this topic right now. Uh, and is it important to us as a chemist and chemical engineer? And also I'm going to give you an overview view of one of the AI subsets, which is called machine learning. I'll show you some application and then I'm going to conclude. Before I start uh, this, um, I would like just to know uh, yeah, I mean, uh, who is here. So there is a few keywords, uh, a buzzword actually, let's say people are using nowadays when we talk about AI and machine learning, such as an artificial intelligence, machine learning, chemometric and chemoinformatics, digitalization, data science, big data analytics, clustering, classification, NLP, natural language processing, internet of things and robotic and automation. Uh, probably that some of these words sounds familiar to some of you, some of us not. I just want to know uh, how the distribution is. So please, if you don't mind and you are from your mobile, as you can see here, just type menti.com as you see it here, menti.com and then he will ask you to enter this code. Please enter this code. And there's a three multiple choice concerning this question. So could you please do this now? So in the com, please enter this numbers and answer the questions. So there's a three choices here. I have a quite a bit of knowledge about it. I have a little knowledge. And the third choice is I never heard about this before. So let's take one minute. So we have eight people participated so far, though we have 37 people here. So you can see dynamically in front of you that things are changing. Okay. Interesting. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, so almost more than half of the attendees here participated in this. So many of the people have a bit of knowledge of this. Some have a very little, and we have 16% of people that we never heard about this. So I think it will be very useful to the pink and red group here, which are more than half of the people who participated in this vote. Very good, thank you very much. Okay, so back to uh, the slide here. Um, what is AI? So let's first of all define what is artificial intelligence. If you look at the literature, um, actually there is many definition uh, of the artificial intelligence available in the literature. The one that is really, yeah, any, uh, uh, honest to say is this one, which is the study of how to make computer do things at which at the moment people are doing better. And as you can see here, we have the word things. So basically things imply that we can use artificial intelligence for, for anything. Okay. So now that things make it more flexible to be applied to different uh, disciplines in engineering or in science. It's also been applied in finance and business. So the, the area or the domain of applying artificial intelligence is, is broad. However, we are going to uh, focus on our domain in chemistry and chemical engineering. However, the word intelligence comes with certain features. So what is the characteristic of things being intelligence? And generally, is an intelligence. The thing that is intelligent has the capability of learn. Okay, reasoning, logic, and, and the thing that he's talking about or deciding about, understanding, seeing relationship, uh, between the information or the data that is given uh, to him. So all this uh, type of, of characteristics is, is what make a thing um, intelligent. And this is actually what we are trying to incorporate into the machine uh, in order to call it than an artificial intelligent machine, which can achieve a certain uh, task. Uh, a bit of history here. Who's the first guy? AI. It is that guy, uh, John uh, McCarthy. Uh, by the way, he um, he's the first guy who coined the word uh, artificial intelligence in 1956 in uh, the Dartmouth College uh, during a conference, con, con conference Maria Viot. It was a mathematics uh, conference and, and he introduced that word artificial uh, intelligence. After his introduction, booming artificial intelligence, which they call it the golden years. And during these golden years, Jamiat <coughs> had a lot uh, of fund from the government okay, in order to accelerate uh, uh, research around this area. However, it was a very simple Boolean expression, uh, F then rules uh, of things that uh, trying to achieve certain uh, objectives. But then, uh, again, artificial intelligence, people associate this word with many things around us. And for example, when you see some of the computers, that's uh, alpha goal uh, against you. So people when look at this artificial intelligence. Some people they look at the robotics and they start to think about and her realization and her temfil artificial intelligence. El facial recognition, people are working in So this is a kind of artificial intelligence because the machine can recognize that. It is me, not Faisal, who's, who's there. Fafi hai salfatil recognition is a characteristic of intelligence that the machine yamtalika. Uh, so that's give you also um, what AI is, is about. Speech recognition, metal Siri. Uh, this is a very famous Siri. Is basically again based on the speech recognition. Expert system and machine learning. This, and this two in particular are very 
uh, relevant to us as a chemist in chemical engineering. Uh, uh, and there is a lots of example. By the way, these examples are not new. Okay, so uh, after the, actually the dendril was the first one. It's actually uh, for Stanford, the lot of the three professors, they came up with an expert system, computer, who can find a new chemical compound in organic chemistry. Okay. That's, this actually expert system is, is a system that you have to program. So it's basically based, it's based on a, a experience that I have. So you put your experience into rules actually and save it in the computers. There is also the consultant for physical property decision. This is actually for engineers. It's actually using a VLE data, vapor liquid equilibrium data that uh, chemical engineers using it for, for example, designing, uh, designing and calculation. So this is what one of the very early attempts of introducing expert system in our field. This is actually doctor. Okay, computer, doctor computer. Okay, so this is basically a machine that can treat blood blood infection. So diagnosis, it's a diagnosis, had the blood infection. So can also give you a prescription of how you can be treated. So this is again a realization of an intelligent that the machine got the application, which is again something good. Now machine learning. The machine learning is, is again a method of realizing intelligence. The method is a bit different because here we really depends on data. Okay. And based on rule experience. And you had to learn the experience. It's you can think about it as that the experience is encapsulated in the data. Okay. And then the, the task become how to extract this information or knowledge from the data okay so expert system and ml in particular are are the one which are uh, more relevant to us in the area of the so the problems are all of them are in the same pattern recognition okay i need to recognize a certain pattern exists in the data reasoning and number Okay, most of these problems are L defined. You know, L defined, yani, the path that I have to, to go through in order to propose a solution for you. So, neither I have an expected solution for you. So, this is what we call it L defined problem. Diamond, el noisy, uh, model uncertainty, uh, uh, non linearity is, is high. So, there is no scaling uh, feature exists. And usually when, when we use this, we need, we need a solution of Sarah, okay? Now, actually all this, if you are a chemical engineer, you will see that most of our problem in the design, scheduling, uh, modeling is, is basically combine all, all these facts. And that's why if you don't to in the chemical engineering or chemistry or be a chasba that AI. Why now? Why people are talking a lot about this? In 1956, more than 70 years. So why, why people have AI? Mainly there is three reasons First of all, the improvement in the software and hardware. Computer It is not as before. So think that uh, if you look at the literature and you go back and see how the people are trying to do or implement this, twin the silicon at white side. Okay, and 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 it's really need a lot of, of programming skills, mathematical skills, and passion. passion, neither programming skill, you are still can use this stuff. And what's make this that also very uh, easy reaching is software. And then uh, software, yeah, a lot of combination and collection of softwares that helps you. Minimal programming, it's having a GUI, graphical user interface, that makes it very easy for you to interact with, 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 with the software. But in the, in, in the top of that is, in the top of that is really a, a, a massive amount of data that we have right now. Hatta sudden this my unit of data, and can this my kilobyte, megabyte, I don't know. For me, when I look at this at the first time, the unit size is 
Well, I can go up to gigabyte. This may have to number the telco or Zane's terabyte. But there is also people talk about petabyte, exabyte, zettabyte. So all these are units that you are going to hear about them very soon. I believe so and the next explosion of data like this. It is basically because now we have lots of instrumentation. Okay. And there is a lot of development and improvement in the way that we are measuring things. Okay. All this are really uh, come, come together. Just to give you an, an example of a uh, feeling shown in hardware to my I computer is McRae 2 in 1985. You can see that a computational speed model is 1.9 giga gigaflops. Uh, gigaflops is like a unit to assess a, 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 a number of processing uh, uh, of the of the of the machine or the CPU. We have the power that can consume 150 kilowatts. That's why you need a cooling system associated with, with, with this computer. Now, this is, by that time, for 85, it was costing $16 million machine. If you take the time value of money, you can see that this is like a 32 million of today dollars. computer, you have something better than this in your, in your Apple Watch, okay? So this is a, a serious one Apple Watch. You can see that it has a three giga flop and it's only consumed one watt. So you, you can compare one watt to 150 kilowatt, but look also to the price. So that's show you how, how the improvement saw and then موجود الحين في hardware. نفس نفس المنطق عشان الوقت صار عندنا very advancement in the software side, the way the data is handled and distrib distributed. صار عندنا very powerful computation architectures that make even the processing of things inside the computer very powerful. Shay Lam Yakum Mojud Sobo. Add to that, with the Mogin Namasara, the big data or the 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 large amount of, of data that becomes uh, now uh, again because of the advances of instrumentation and, and automation. And then I hint to got it Kellan, you are talking about hardware, software, data then let's the IT do for us this. Why we have to bother about this. There is a people who are specialized on, on doing this. I mean, this, this picture is very nice and, and I, I, I really believe in it uh, very much. However, okay. now, ال, ال, you can see here that there is a three circle and they have the same size and the data science, okay, and the data where they leverage all this uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning tools. You can see there is an intersection of different things. Math and statistics is at the heart of this, which is way. Computers is there and the subject matter expertise. It's a key, it's a key. However, based on our personal experience being doing this now for more than a decade, I would say that the subject matter expertise is really a matter when we deal with the data. Fee wide projects has been failed when it comes, when, you to, when we talk about artificial intelligence or data science, because it has not been done by people with, with angle sufficient uh, experience in, in the domain that they are working with. I say, why Mohammed Livalikan and Nikotib, this circle here should really be a bit bigger. Uh, when when we tackle a problem at a specific domain, it will be always good that someone who's using AI can have the knowledge about the area, or they work in a team, like the Dandron people, who have the first expert system, can be a computer scientist, and they are chemists, and they build a team, and they work together. Okay, so we cannot we cannot basically give it to the IT people to do a problem or to solve a problem uh, to us. examples. Now, why chemical chemists and chemical engineers should care about this as well? You can see that this uh, literus, Nobel literus, have, all of them are chemists. There has been uh, at Nobel because, again, the development of multi scale models. And as he men, as it's been mentioned in the Swedish Academy of Science here, that today the computer is just important tool for chemists as the tested tube. So uh, uh, people are now talking about a lot of advancement in 
in in in introducing the computer into the into the lab and and to the chemical uh, lab and become a necessary مصارع بارع عن شيء optional صار شيء ضروري إنك تدخله. Also, people was working in uh, in industry. Um, in Bobco, in Alba, Akid, definitely they have they have heard this word a lot: digitalization. Now, digitalization is at the heart of the digitalization coming all these enablers our technologies. Who منهم أو من أهمهم AI, the artificial uh, intelligence. Now, also you have seen that the COVID nineteen, في فترة the COVID اللي مرينا فيها شفنا شقد مهم. A digital transformation. I mean, all of us has been working at homes, so without computers, without using all this digital technology, it's become very hard. In the next mesh of life, like ma ma basically. Faisal, can you please just mute? Uh, I think you have a mute all buttons. So you can mute because I feel I, I hear a noise. Yes, Doctor, right away. Okay, I have, of course, to open mine. Okay, and according to this, uh, few white corporation have a lot of money in order to to boost uh, of their revenue and the revenue just and the revenue model to support this. Also, في الجامعات اللي برا, people are start introducing what we call a synthesis 4.0 على وزن industry 4.0, and بعد في ناس قاعد يتكلم على internet of chemistry. This is very analogy analogous to the internet of things. People who have ever heard about Internet of Things, the new one, Internet of Chemistry. Now, Industry 4.0 and Internet of Things is all about connectivity. موضوع ال connectivity is the key word here. So, كل ما صارت ال 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 the process, the framework connected better. كل ما أنت you realize and and achieve the goal, the objective of an Industry 4.0 or Synthesis 4.0. كل ما كانت التاسك اندبندنت وبعيده كل ما كان انت بعيد عن المفهوم دي اوكي سو ذا كونكتيفيتي از ذا كي وورد هير سو ذس از سمثينج از ا تيك اواي فروم ذس توك توداي موضوع الكونكتيفيتي الهاي ثرو بوت اوتوميتد اكويبمنتس ذس از سمثينج اي ام نوت شور اف يو ار فاميليار ويز بس فور اكزامبل ان ساديو رامكو دي ار يوزينج ات ا لوت The high throughput automated equipment. I've seen it uh, myself. Uh, jihaz, you can uh, try an alternative, a combination of 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 a lots of reactant, catalyst, and solvent combinations. You generate a lots of data. You need to use the statistics, in particular multivariate analysis, in order to to look at this uh, result and trying to draw a meaningful a meaningful calculation uh, conclusion from it. So I. Okay, already uh, uh, going on as well. Smart devices, um, visualization, uh, robotics. Robotics has been introduced in the in the in the chemistry laboratory, uh, laboratory في في جامعات في شركات as well. So why we not take advantage of all this development in our field? Now, the reality is that people already started to do this. I was I was. Uh, seeing uh, those publication from 2000 to 2020, from 2000 to 2020, and I don't know if you can see في آخر خمس سنوات, okay, the uh, care which long ago I did see. This is actually a number of the artificial intelligence related journal publication. So you can see that a lot of publication has been published using these tools. And the 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 في براءات اختراع كثيرة مبنية على الـ AI actually has been appeared in the recent years as well. طيب uh, ما بي بروح وايد عشان عشان الوقت أنا كل شوي قاعد أطلع الوقت عندي and ال 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 evolvement of the AI بالنسبة لنا إحنا ككيميكال إنجينيرز مر بثلاث فترات عندنا الـ expert system era اللي هي من 1983 ل 1955. Now during this period of time ال ما كان في نفس هاي اللي مسعره ويتكم إياه الدندرل اللي هو الجهاز اللي أنت تحط فيه رول that's why they call it a knowledge based system or a rule based system where you are basically introducing أو encapsulate خلينا نقول تخزن ال 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 experience اللي صارت عندك في جهاز and then through certain programming you are trying to mimic the problem solving skill هذه 
اللي موجودة عند الإنسان. فأنت كأنك you put this inside an expert system. And whenever you are trying to interact, في يكون عندك again recognizing algorithms inside the how it extract the information from data and match it with what you are talking about. So this is an area. من 1983 كانت تتميز بموضوع الاكسبرت سيستم. بعدين من 90 ل 2008 اي مين ديورينج ذيس تايم اكشلي ديورينج ذيس تايم ذيس از وير اي يعني كنت خلاص تاني بادي بي اتش دي مالتي كانت النيورو نتورك ايرا طبعا مو بادي في 90 انا بديت في 2007 اوكي بات اي مين وين اي ستارتد ذات واز ذا اند اوف ذا نيورو نتورك ايرا. اند ذا ريزن از الفتره اللي انتهت يعني واحد بيقول نيورو نتوركس في 2000 انتهت ليش؟ بيكوز وين وين اتس ستارت كان كان النيورال نتورك الموجود اللي هي السنجل لاير نيورال نتورك بروايكم اياها قبل شوي. And ال ال المشكله مع السنجل لاير نيورال نتورك was the way that we train it uh, او نعلمها شلون تشتغل، اوكي؟ okay. فما كان عندنا algorithm كان موجود ال back propagation algorithms لكن بشكله البدائي which was proposed in 1986. So this is work only for when we have a single a single layers inside the neural networks. However, the wider problem has not been addressed uh, the single layer problems and researchers. So we need to add more head and layer into, into a, a neural networks, but we cannot do anything because still more and the algorithm that is capable of treat, learn, uh, training, I would train the neural network. In 2005, until now, we entered the age of deep learning with data science era. But a very uh, significant contribution into this area of uh, an introduction of uh, deep neural networks and the way of training a deep neural networks. But we can show you what you know has been deep neural network. However, what I can tell you at this stage here that an advancement for data science, fil, sorry, for computer science, upon, uh, upon the algorithm that we can now use it. To train a deep neural networks, and now when we have a deep neural networks, mean that we have more capability of capturing a complex relationship, and this is something was not was not exist before. Now it's a still a back propagation algorithms. However, it's coupled with a filtering capability, well convolution uh, capability, as well as it uses GPU, the graphics, the graphics processing units. So it's a, a hardware piece here. طبعاً حق اللي يعرفون الجي بي يو اللي يلعبون بلاي ستيشن و في بوكس دي نو ذات اتس 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 ات ا فيري امبورتنت بارت ذير البروسيسنج برفورمانس مالها عالي اوكي اند ذا كومباينيشن اوف ذيس توجذر خلى موضوع الديب ليرنينج واقع هاويفر بيفور ات واز سمثينج امبوسيبل تو دو As well as the whole of the architecture of the neural networks, added from the architecture, the basic, like the recurrent neural networks. This is very important when we deal with dynamic systems. I personally used it with low short time memory architectures. Again, it's a dynamic neural network architecture. It's important, especially when you are dealing with dynamic systems. Okay. People are using also the terminology for literature as a very casual, bad mix-up. I mean, you go like AI and ML. What's the difference between them? In general, the AI is the intelligent, the the machine learning is the way that we can achieve even this the way. Okay. So think about the expert system again. It was the way to achieve the the way. Okay. A way to realize the intelligence. The fact that machine learning is again is a way to realize the intelligence. However, the 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 hello for the machine learning is that it is data based or data driven. يعني أنت تستخدم the data in order to achieve the intelligence. For the وجود the hardware and software with massive amount of data, صار موضوع machine learning موضوع the الساعة مثل ما يقولون. Okay, so this is a very important difference between the AI and ML. People are using them interchangeably, but however, I hope after this talk today, صار عندك Uh, uh, you can distinguish between the two. Okay, the Al artificial intelligence is a fikra. Machine learning it's a method to achieve to achieve the al fikra al intelligence. Okay, let me give you a quick overview of AI with um, the ML. So how we achieve this? Other people are simplify this and take data set. 
And then through three main Halingul uh, output, you can solve a lot of the problem. But people have all problems in Marjuna and for chemical engineering or for chemistry or for whatever. And we put it into three general type of a problem, either regression or prediction. How will Nenta, for example, uh, predict certain output? Classification and clustering, you call the Hatum and pattern recognitions and fault detection and diagnosis. The lane are three general names of However, the idea is very simple. You start with an input data or a domain, data. box, you can think about it as a box where you can learn the relation or the correlation between or the relationship between the input and the output data. And this has actually happened based on uh, Hangul is strategic approach. Yani, Musal for random, la, fi, 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 um, uh, learning behind this. People start now to talk about then shlon khali il box bi yaqad al input data di wi ta'allam. Okay. Fa andina thalata tanwa min al learning. People call it supervised learning. Supervised learning, um, can I talk about algorithm and tell him, for example, to distinguish between dog and cat. Think about it as a box. Til mara ta'ati. Surat dog or cat, who will realize what is dog and cat. Okay, so this is if you think about it, it's a classification problems. Okay, it's a classification problem. However, for me to teach the algorithm to do this, the label. So that's why they call it a supervised yani on alma bil label. Axhadi uh, unsupervised learning. The unsupervised learning, I don't have to give him a label. He will try to recognize. How to distinguish between apple and uh, yeah, okay, the tufaha, watermelon, uh, based on based on size, based on texture, based on certain metric, you will be able to to classify them. So that's why we call it unsupervised learning because the algorithm using certain rule, for example, مثل ما قلت لكم ال الحجم أو الملمس يستطيع إنه هو يفرق بين الثلاثة. طبعا الناس الحين حاليا يتكلمون عن شيء ليرنينج جديد طبعا اي ام بارتيكولار شوي جاذبني موضوع الري انفورسمنت ليرنينج هذه بيكوز اتس بيسكلي ليرنينج ثرو ا فيدباك سينس اي هاف ا فيدباك ا باك جراوند اون كنترول اي كان سي ذيس از فيري فيري بروميسينج اوضح فكره الري انفورسمنت ليرنينج عن طريق هي قائمه على مبدا الثواب والعقاب او العصا والجزره Okay, so it's it's again it's you teach you teach for example here as you can see in the picture I'm uh, the girl here is teaching the dog something and the way it's it's going to do it is between uh, okay okay so this this concept of 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 uh, a reward and punishment can be encapsulated. Inside the algorithms, and then the learning, the learning happens. Now, this is actually the idea that has been used to train the Go machine. Hadi, لعبة اسمها Go. I don't know if anyone of you. طبعا هذه Alpha Go مال مال Google. يقومون يأخذون اللعبة ويخلون اللعبة تلعب مع روحها حق أربعة أيام. Okay, imagine. طبعا it's already know the rules. تقدر تلعب مع روحها أربعة أيام. فاز هي قاعدة تلعب. She's trained itself. Whenever it says what is right, it says that it says what is right. It says what is wrong. It means that it is wrong and it punishes itself. But he can optimization in the background. Behind the scene, it's all mathematics. However, after this time, after four or five days, they play with them. This is the Middle East Seedle. It's a world champion. Basically, they lost. Okay. So you can see now that the game, the game, was lost. أو حاولت توصل لمرحلة الانتليجنس، okay so that's what the people aiming here is إن يخلون ماشين لأن هاي كمبيوتر basically خلا ماشين يوصل إلى إلى مرحلة ال ال اللعبة. wow I have ten minutes okay طيب طبعا this is how we learn again behind this is a lots of mathematics. And fitting and data and all this concept. If you are scientists or engineers, definitely you have you went through all this. My um, and then the data. We always have to balance between the fitting the noise and the generalization. 
We might have underfit, good fit, overfit. So this is like a basics of, artificial intelligence. You will see that they always start with this basic concept. Again here, this is show you the three output. When we talk about AI using ML, AI using ML, not AI using expert system, but AI using ML. Diamond head can have a problem, whether regression or classification or clustering. And associated with each one of this P methods void, okay, there are lots of methods. I mentioned them here. For example, key nearest neighbor, support vector machine, random forest. I think kill them about and طرق uh, هنقول أو uh, structure modeling structure neural network واحد منهم um, people who are wishing to know more about these areas they really have to go and read and learn from this and there is a lot of good هاي إني حط لكم واحد site uh, website واحد في very nice and simple information the internet is full with هنقول uh, teaching modules of all this uh, stuff. And the learning never stop. Okay. Uh, this is actually the idea of classification. Think about it as I have two class of, of the dog will cat. And the idea of the classifier is an help, a help, help between. So the, it has equation. Think about it as a straight line. Okay. intercept, right? But basically, when I say I'm I'm trying to teach the classifier. So this is a translated to what? In the mail will slop model khat. I in a very simple Halingul way. I just basically grab like the picture. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna learn the classifier. I'm gonna learn that he put the khat here in a certain place. He put this line in a certain place such that he's able to classify dogs from the cat. Okay. And then he takes a rule. For example, he sees, for example, a man who is on the top of the cat or on the bottom of the cat, or he uses the nearest neighbor. اللي هو يشوف هو أقرب to which kind of samples here is it the triangle one or the circle one the idea is more or less something similar طبعا في شوية limitation لما تكون عندك linear classifier لما تكون انت عندك مثلا classification the boundary is not linear it's non-linear then there is again something else more هل نقول sophisticated techniques مثل support vector machine support vector machine basically مثل ما انتو جايبين اني استخدم فكرة في الرياضيات اسمها الكيرنل It's a very intelligent way uh, أو طريقة شو تسوي الكيرنل basically تأخذك من two dimension to ديك three dimension فإذا أنت if you are in the two my dimension non-linear when you move to the higher dimension it's linear and when you become a linear this is something good because then you can use a linear classifier to push between the two classes فهذه كلها عبارة عن a mathematical trick and transformation People have used it to solve problems. Again, this is an ML, machine learning, that depends on data. That's why you see a data here, to achieve or to, or to realize intelligence. The neural network, بلا شك هو أكثر اللي أو خلينا نقول ال ML techniques اللي تستخدم حتى عندنا حتى في chemistry. Um, you can see هاي اللي كنت أتكلم عنه مساعة a single head. And طبعاً neural network architecture مالها and that input in neurons, or and that head in neurons, or and that output in neurons, or and that connection between them. Now, all this connection hold weight, okay? Can uh, can have strength, okay? From this input to all of these. How do you get to say single hidden layer? And this is what we call it a deep neural network. Some people call this a single, if someone has shallow, acts a deep. But for the first time, we have an algorithm to train this guy, but And but it, it failed in, in training this. بعدين مثل ما قلت لكم مع وجود ال 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 في 2006 طلعوا algorithms which is a big back propagation algorithms combined مع اللي هو differential calculus uh, will filtration اللي هو convolution will hardware اللي هو GPU. After all this together, we were able to train this guy. قبل ذي ما كان هالشيء موجود. And guess what? This سوى 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 فوضى في الديب نيورال نتورك عقب شوي بتشوفون شنو الفوضى اللي سووها. And, and you can see that each one of these neurons is, is basically a mathematical operation. So as you can see, there is a summation here. So I'm taking every feature or input here, weight it, and then sum it, and then pass it to activation function. Usually it's a nonlinear map. And then you get an output. 
And لما أنا أقول أنا قاعد أعلم the neural network, basically I'm trying to find this weight. ف one of the things that I, I I always like to say that مثل ما شرحت لكم قبل شوية موضوع supervised أو learning. The learning in a sense في الواقع هي شنو؟ هي parameterization. يعني people who are dealing with statistics and mathematics They know that when when we say that we want to estimate parameters, okay. So learning is 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 in fact is just a parameterization. لأن إذا أنت بتفكر على learning إن إن ماشين يتعلم فأنا أقدر أفكر عن نفسي إن أنا أنا ماشين بس بس عندي لحم. Just like I am a machine with a meat, okay. So there is there is still a gap between a real learning and a machine. So the right word but people just trying to mimic the intelligence they say that's why they say learning since it is a characteristic of intelligence بس الحقيقه هي سنس ان انا قاعد استخدم الكمبيوتر it is nothing but a parameterization okay فانت قاعد تدور الباراميتر and as we know اذا انا عندي مثلا الويت والبايس basically i'm trying to minimize certain function okay it's an optimization people who have taken the optimization they know that the learning is nothing but behind the scene It is really a, a, a parameterization. Okay, شلون بسرعة أنا بسرعة ويكم شلون the chemist دخل على حق عالم ال intelligence. طبعا you know that the chemist usually they have a lots or they used to have a lots of data coming from a تجارب that they they did it over the years. Okay, and they report all this in 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 a journal papers or in the published patents and so on. Okay, so. Somehow this is your data source, and then you want to bring this data source into the computer. So you need to libraries and data source, you need descriptor, and you how will the data how you have to transform this data to a طريقة الكمبيوتر يفهمها. That's what we call it a descriptor, and then we have to interpret this data. فطبعا again the data it's a lot, huge amount of chemical structure موجودة. In 1971, we have 1 million substance were registered in the chemical abstract surface. We have 160 million organic and inorganic uh, uh, sub, uh, substance and 68 million protein and nucleic acid sequence. The database. We have to find a way in which we can in, again take this and put it inside. El, el computers, people come up with what we call the molecule editors and molecule uh, uh, viewers, and then we end up with a lots of database that you want to need a database in Mojuda, and also you can see here the link malha. Now, all these databases are something that so there is a lots of information from the chemistry uh, uh, realm, if you if you like. Now, the data the on shlon shlon akhdha or shlon ashabha. I mean, I think especially in the new generation now, they are familiar with Python because it's uh, one of the courses when scientists and engineers are from or يتعلمونها في ال في الجامعة. A lots of libraries actually, مثل هاي ال Pumpkin Pi. I mean, the Pumpkin is is one of the databases as you can see here. Okay. فيها chemical and physical properties, biological activity, safety, toxic. Uh, toxicity and many others. There is Phil Python library, Phil Python library, which you can extract information from this database. So the data multic موجودة في الكمبيوتر. زين إشلون الداتا تصير في الكمبيوترز؟ الداتا هذه صايرة عبارة عن structure, chemical structures. So again, people find a descriptor. A descriptor basically خلنا نأخذ أسهل مثال اللي هو for example. الفينول مثلا يقومون يحاولون الى اكسي سيمبلز اوكي ففي في رولز جافر ذس انه مثلا عندك الفيرست الفيرست اتمز كلهم سمول لترز مين ذير از رينج ف دي كم اب وذ ا واي باختصار دي كم اب وذ ا واي فروم ويتش دي كان ترانسليت اول ذس انفورميشن انتو انتو ذا كمبيوترز اوكي فساعات تشوف ايش كبر مثلا مركب مثل ذي تشوف شلون الديسكربتور ماله Okay, however, the computer will realize that this guy is this one. Okay, and also it will pull my kill the properties multi in a way. Okay, I'm going to be actor men men descriptors. Once we take this as in strict uh, descriptors and the cloud computers, then I can model it using an AI uh, and machine learning. But uh, very interesting things that I don't know if many of you know that Peter Hassel's chemistry, someone chemometrics, 
actually it's been coined by this guy, uh, Savanti Wold, من University of Omia. هذه من الناس اللي من أوائل الناس في around the sixties who use all this ML, especially principal component analysis, partially squared SVM, support vector machine, linear discriminant analysis. هاي التكنيكس اللي اللي a lots of people now are using. Actually, this guy has يعني كانوا يستخدمونه. He's a chemist, by the way, and they've been using this for very long time. However, ما كان في الضجة اللي إحنا اللي إحنا نسمعها الحين. زين عشان الوقت بعد خلنا نصوح سيدة في الابلكيشن. وين وين ال وين ال AI ظهر سيطة سيط ماله ظهر وين في ال في ال chemistry. Actually, the literature throwing ثلاثة أماكن. The organic synthesis is is one very important area where artificial intelligence. طلعت طلعت عضلات فيها. The drug discovery this is a very very important uh, area as well. Well, analytical chemistry. Well, analytical chemistry as well. This high chemometric things. اللي رويتكم إياه مساعة. في the analytical chemistry it's been used um, wide. في the drug and organic الموضوع more challenging. More challenging. طبعا من أشهر ال ال التطبيقات حق ال AI اللي هو the retro synthesis. Retro synthesis basically اللي هو عكس عملية ال production يعني you instead of starting from a reactant and then you reach the products you have to inverse the the idea يعني مثلا طلع لك product معين and you find this product from somewhere and it's in a very very little amount نادر إنك تتحصل مثل هال هال products and then you say okay how can how can I I how can I produce this product using أشي موجودة Okay, so you need really to know the path. شلون أوصل حق ال 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 product هذي بالصفات اللي فيه بال properties اللي موجودة فيه. So basically, what I'm trying to inverse inverse the story. So think about it, طبعاً عشان عشان أوصل حق هاي المكان. It's really a maze. يعني في 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 a lot of way until I reach the point where I'm trying to to reach. Okay, and بعض الطرق تؤدي إلى توديك للمكان اللي تبيه في بعض الطرق يعني أنت ممكن تمشي في الاتجاه ذي وتوصل حق شيء مسدود. Okay, you might move here, but you go to nowhere. So it is really very tedious thing to do, and people start to think, how can we use AI? How can you use AI to the retro synthesis analysis? This is a very interesting. طبعا ما اشتغلت عليها انا بس انا فاند ذا ليتش اي فاند ات ريلي فيري انترستنج اريا فور ذا نيو جينيريشن اور هاو ايفر ساينتست هير اتس ا فيري انترستنج اريا وير بيبل كان يوز الاشياء مالت الاي اي اند ذير از ا لوتس اوف ايفيدنس اند سكسسفول ستوري ان ذا ليتشر ذات توك اباوت الريترو سينثيسيس اناليسيس اند بيبل مثل ما انتم شايفين مستخدمين ذيس از اكشلي ثري نت ورك مستخدمين واحده من الام ال ذي كول ات مونتو كارلو Uh, trace search. The uh, idea, in simple again, as you take a data from one of these databases, you apply the machine learning in order to achieve a certain objective. For example, drug discovery. For example, predicting the output from the reactions. Whatever you are trying to do. But again, it's always how oh, it's diamond mabni ala ala data. Also, people have used AL to identify new chemistry. Okay, so I'm going to jump again. Data encoding. I make it. I have to convert it to a way that the computer can understand it. We are using support vector machine and LDE ML. And when people did that, they came up with a new chemistry. Not only that, with the with the improvement for automation and instrumentation, they were able to automate the amalia. And amalia started kind of automated. In chemical engineering as well, we have used a lot uh, a, a, a neural network. This is actually this is actually the work that I personally did it in our lab, high lab, and then in the Bahrain University of Bahrain, the chemical engineering department. Uh, uh, it's called the ultra filtration system. It's a complicated system, as you can see. It's a dynamic system. That's why I use a dynamic version of the neural networks. Okay, so this is a dynamic. So this is not the one that I showed to you earlier. Here, actually, I'm incorporating a piece of memory into it. And that's why we call it the recurrent neural uh, networks. So I'm not only feeding the current input, but even the, the previous one. 
And as you can see here, we get a very nice uh, prediction. So this is basically show you the actual versus the predicted. So we are getting a very nice prediction when you use uh, this for prediction in the chemical engineering application. This is another thing that I did during my PhD where I have used some of the machine learning uh, tools, in particular, the principal component analysis to detect uh, and diagnose fault into a large petrochemical plant. But a source model is chemical uh, with chemistry. And with chemistry, as you can see, these databases have all of these uh, uh, reagents and uh, and the properties, whether it's a physical or chemical, biological properties, the bonds, the nature of the bonds, the, the functional groups, so all of just the data that you use. Here in the example in front of you, our, our data is basically a measurement that comes, that is, that's measuring the process variable into the plant. However, the tool is still the same. I have the data in the data, the health computer, then I'm using ML in order to solve, to solve a specific problems, which was in this particular uh, slide, Elihua, detecting the faults. Yani Agdar Hadid Shino Sabab El Utb al degradation in performance in Lisaira Andy. So this is a way to leverage AI into solving Alfi, solving um, problems and then so an example for literature wide that. I hope that I'm going to take a few keywords that allow you to, to go and look at this interesting area. There a lot of stuff there. By the way, I'm going to show you the PhD multi not the topic of AI in the way that we have now. Even when we start this topic, it's what? We work on something that sounds now very, yani, it was a surprise to me. Yani. And all what we did, we did it offline. The things now is, is it's more promising than 15 years ago. So the condition finally exists. This is the conclusion. Exists for AI to play a greater role in both chemistry and chemical, chemical engineering. We are also witnessing the dawn of a new transformative era in the data acquisition. Peter Tower guides here for data acquisition, for utilization, for management of different kinds of knowledge, for connectivity. Connectivity is issue. I think you got in like companies here in Bahrain, in, in petroleum companies here in Bahrain, they are they are, they are working on the cloud. Okay, the capacity bad muscle and that now to promote this is very important to promote the technology transition to the industry 4.0, academic institution, industrial player, government agency, they have to work together. So that's basically how the world is is moving Okay, it takes not only technology innovation, but also workforce education and curriculum enhancement and awareness like what we are doing right now. So let me leave you with this saying here, would say when the winds of change blow, some people build walls and others build windmills. So it's up to you to choose whether you want to build the walls and stay away from this, or you harness and leverage all this technology and uh, for, for your benefit. Thank you very much. Inshallah, I'm not going to give um, And I hope that I added something to you. I, I bring up to you some new stuff. Uh, this is my email. If you need to discuss anything of this, if you need to know the sources from which I collect this material from, uh, if you need to collaborate in, one, in any of these things, please feel free to reach me on, on this email. Thank you very much, and back to you, Faisal. Zakla Khair, Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, it was indeed a very informative and wonderful presentation. Um, I'm sure the crowd has benefited uh, a lot uh, with this. Uh, we don't have any questions yet in the um, chat, so I'll open the floor um, for anybody to unmute themselves and ask any questions. Uh, can I can I give a nice comment for uh, Dr. Shams, Dr. Mahmoud? Yes, sure. sure, Professor. Sure, you go ahead. Well, uh, hey, uh, it, Dr. Muhammad Shams, brother, you made me proud. I was enjoying every moment of your talk. 
and the way you presented it, the way you were talking, looked like that I was attending your class. It was not a seminar or workshop, it was superb. So keep up your good work, keep up your hard work and enjoy your future. Thank you so much, very kind of you. Thank you very much, Professor Mohammed. We are, we are your students. And I still remember when I was sitting in your class in the physical chemistry course, and you always make it very interesting to us. So we learn from you, Dr. Mohammed. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah, especially this AI and all these technologies and all these things, believe me, I mean, it looks like a dream. Yeah. It and, uh, you know, and the way people are using it. So I think, you know, especially in your last slide, people should go for wind, windmill. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the yeah. world. Thank you Thank so you. much. Very kind Thank of you. you. I appreciate, appreciate, you. appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, hello? Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, thank you uh, once again, uh, Dr. Mohammed, uh, for especially the common metrics. That's the field that I'm very much interested in. And we used to do the principal component analysis, as you uh, probably uh, recall, uh, or you have come across in 2D correlation. Nowadays, we are um, basically combining uh, two um, uh, matrices uh, developed from infrared with uh, UV uh, or infrared with NMR, as well as uh, other species. Uh, I have one publication, but in those days, it wasn't called the AI, but the principal component analysis, or which we call the singular value decomposition. Uh, basically, uh, we were detecting from the chemistry point of view as um, the impurities that is available in the uh, various uh, solutions that we were uh, collecting. So uh, I'd like to uh, collaborate with this uh, idea and we are here also to uh, support uh, such uh, research. Um, and uh, I really enjoyed it and it's very, very interesting. And we are in the process of uh, publishing another uh, paper on 2D correlation, basically facing the uh, infrared with uh, UV. And the way we do it basically is um, formation of all these matrices with the effect of some inhibitors like um, temperature or uh, concentration where it changes the uh, matrices and each spectra is converted to a big large matrix and uh, taking the uh, 2D correlation. So um, just want to know if uh, any collaboration uh, can be done with this uh, work or have you done any uh, 2D correlation that uh, can benefit our work and our research? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Who's, who's speaking? Uh, this is Sadiq Al-Alawi. It's a pleasure <laughs> having you. I didn't know that actually. That's the first time. I I but I I never know that you worked on the chemometrics uh, area. Uh, yes, yeah. Part of my uh, postgraduate as well as um, uh, PhD uh, thesis was on chemometrics, basically on uh, data acquisition. And okay. uh, those days we managed to do uh, up to um, uh, sub microsecond. That was in uh, 96, 97, uh, before I graduated a long time ago. Uh, now I'm collaborating with some uh, researchers in the uh, Ohio University, where the university which I graduated from. Although I left the university, but I'm in, uh, in, in contact with uh, Professor Salim, as well as my collaborators in, uh, in the US. Uh, but um, this is the uh, way, especially the data acquisition and uh, the 2D correlation is the very hot area that I'm working on uh, as well. So um, yeah, we uh, would love to hear more uh, of your research work and publications in this area. Relax, this is something actually very interesting. Actually, uh, we are doing right now some work using uh, fluorospectrometry data uh, mm -hmm. for uh, wastewater. 
um, with the, a couple of colleagues as, as well as with the, one of the local wastewater treatment plant where it's basically a chemometric exercise as well. Uh, right. We are using the PLS, partial least square, uh, as yeah, well right. as, yeah. Um, uh, and we are using the spectrofluorometer basically to, uh, to, uh, to protect the COD and the DOD uh, right. toward achieving or building a soft sensor that we can use it later on uh, in a closed loop system for, for, uh, for control purpose. But uh, right. it is basically a chemometric exercise. And of course, the Kursado, this is our pleasure actually working with you and uh, your team in Ohio, definitely, for sure. Sure, great, looking forward. The program that we are using, actually the software was Grams32. I don't know if you have come across this. And Grams32 uh, nowadays is very user-friendly and uh, you can convert easily all the, all the spectra into a big matrix that you can uh, basically extract all the information that you need makes life much much easier uh, where 25 or 30 years uh, ago when I was right. doing the, That's uh, true. the same work yeah That's true. absolutely so That's which software do you use we're using uh, MATLAB oh, we're using MATLAB. MATLAB okay yeah, yeah MATLAB we uh, used to do it as well for the 2D correlation now grams 32 okay. for the data acquisition works as smoothly is just wonderful so thank you once again and i don't want to take uh, the thank time for so other uh, questions yeah thank you thank you um dr shams we have a question from the audience yeah. uh, Sarah has a wonderful question where she says will ai take away more jobs and uh, um basically in the market more th more than it will create basically if the application of AI is going to take away jobs, is the question. <laughs> well, people more keep talking a lot about this, Yanni. Uh, I would, my, my answer is, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. It's uh, whenever the AI become uh, more and more developed, still we need the people that we know how to deal with these technologies. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not a replacement. It's really a complementary thing, Yanni. Can uh, Yanni... Think about it as the way we use to, to solve a problem with pencil and paper, okay? So still, the, the AI is just something that will make our, our life easier, better, uh, but still, you know, it's, still uh, it's still a machine. Uh, uh, what, what it will take is that people that are more, more uh, qualified, okay? So, uh, I always say to my students, yani, um, so if you don't know how to read and write, this is something that is like ignorant. It is not anymore. Now, if you don't know how to program, okay, uh, programming sort of in the Look at the kids, uh, how how the how they deal with the phones and how they deal with the with the. Uh, uh, gaming, the the and the scratch gaming, they, they, they build their games. El, el, things are, are changing. So the thing is, it is not really a replacement, but it's it's really uh, calling for a more qualified, a better qualified people that they can fit into this new uh, 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 workforce realm, if you like. And, and that's why especially I mean, uh, the new generation, they really have to focus on, on, on these tools because things are really changing. Look at us, the Masar al-COVID, we, we start using all this uh, Zoom or Teams and, and lots of people, they don't know about this stuff. So we've been forced to do this. technology at a certain stage, so it's better to start preparing ourselves uh, uh, to to cope up with this uh, invitable changes. Hi, uh, Umar Hatmiya, and everything is, is telling that we are we are going there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I have uh, one question for you, Doctor uh, Mohammed. Babal, Ben Mari. Hussein Halwat, we are. Yeah, hello, buddy. Babal, Babal. Yeah, hello. Uh, as you know, I'm working in Alba also, and uh, we started at Alba to use Industry 4.0. Uh, 
and there's a big project to uh, to uh, transform a lot of our activity to the uh, to the new generation of uh, technology. Uh, how do you see the tendency in Bahrain? I'm speaking about Alba, but I don't know about other companies like Babco, like uh, uh, Tatwir, like Petrochemicals. Do you have any statistics about the tendency of other companies in Bahrain or in GCC for their transformation from uh, uh, this level to the next level of technology? A very good question, uh, Sain. Uh, in in uh, in Bahrain, yes, there is a lot of atoms, though it's very so slow. I was involved personally in uh, in some of the work with with Babco through the previous uh, operational excellence manager. Uh, he left Babco, where uh, well, sponsor I was responsible of the industry 4.0 transformation in the company. Uh, there is a lot of work. Going on in in Babco, had the first meeting in Jamia the engineers in Bahrain. It was the first meeting in Industry 4.0. I don't know if any one of you remember that conference. We we present a paper where we were talking about. We presented together uh, myself and Mark uh, that talk about the uh, the digital transformation journey of Babco. Um, they have started uh, with having um, case studies. Uh, to uh, proof cases. Uh, to move to, to that era. As you know, whenever there is a new things coming on, there's always a resistance. Uh, this is something normal. Uh, you have to deal with uh, all this uh, uh, destructive technologies. But uh, it's going on. Yeah, and you can the Babco. I've seen a lots of very successful uh, 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 stories. Uh, yeah, I cannot talk about it, but there is a lot that has been done. There is a lot that is going on. Yeah, and even that why I know about this because many of our graduates from our department are working there, and the they, they keep telling me about all this stuff. A lot is, is, is happening in in Babco. Um, uh, شركات الثانية موجود بس بشكل أقل يعني uh, I, I don't يعني I don't know about them بس أسمع بس قليل جدا يعني but Babco is yes for Saudi Aramco uh, أنا زرتهم لنا في ال في المدرة في البهران uh, no they are taking uh, very big leaps هنا uh, عندهم center they call it industry 4.0 center uh, the uh, dashboards, the analytics, uh, the drones, the image analysis to, to monitor all the flares. They have a lots of stuff going on there and they built the capacity. High Lashia doesn't happen in overnight. Yani you cannot say, okay, I'm going to take uh, 15 or 20 persons of the people who are, are here and tomorrow they will be ready. This is this is things happen with with time. That's you need. That's why I'm saying at the very last that it's it's a really a collaborative uh, plan uh, between the companies, between the educational entities to prepare this new workforce skills uh, 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 in the people. Um, el, 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 what I see in in, in Aramco uh, uh, because a very good example. Why do you need who are building the capacity? Any garden. They don't expect immediate result, but they are working on this. And I, I'm 100% I'm sure after a very short time, <laughs> they, they will show a very nice example. I think I think Babco are, uh, are, are doing things similar. Hopefully, Meshulim will be in P, uh, modernization project. But when, when things settled, I think they also... Uh, will will move in the same pace at the end. The Alba, uh, I'm not aware, but I know that the operational excellence department uh, is 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 also leveraging Babel Asia. Best, um, I don't have a lots of information, but Bibayan uh, and we do have some collaboration right now with Alba. There is an MOU between University of Bahrain and and and, and Alba, and one of the 
um, uh, project uh, that uh, hopefully will uh, uh, will be between University of Bahrain and Alba is Shayla uh, Alaqab Industry 4.0 and digitalization. So this is something, inshallah, will will appear soon, uh, inshallah. Yeah, I hope I answer your question. Yes, sure. Thank you very much. Um, Ali Yusuf, you've been raising your hand. If you have a question, please. Um, yes, please. So, Salaam alaikum, Doctor. Thank you for that very informative and interesting session. Uh, my question is: In one of your slides, you had a a clustering and the classification. Can you explain briefly what's the difference in between them, the clustering and cl classification? The difference, the difference between clustering and classification is in clustering, uh, you do the the you do the clustering without without labeling. Okay. Yeah, and when you when you classify things, you are going to tell uh, think about it as x1 and x2 here. If you think uh, if you have X1 and X2 here, for example, if the X1 and X2, both of them have a very low levels, something in this area here, then for example, you're gonna label them as A. And if they have a medium level, for example, X1 and X2 have a medium level, you're gonna call them B. And if they are higher level, you are going to call C. So there is a label associated in the classification. In the clustering, it's not. In the clustering, it's, it's just based on there is no label here. So whenever the things are small, they will come and sit together. Okay. And okay. when you get in place, just Arab, Arab, okay. People from another nationality. So this is like a clustering without labeling, right? But in, when you talk about classification, now there is there is an external there is an external label that tells this go here and this go there. Does that answer the yeah. question? Would you like say classification is like um, different levels? For example, like um, the upper, I mean, the whole طبقة الأغنية مثلاً ومتوسطة وهلاً يعني. Yes, for example, it's a supervised. Exactly, based on the دخل, it's good. هذا لين. But it's a supervised. So يعني, you have to label a feature. Any, there is no label of the features. It it's just depends on uh, how similar they are. يعني, okay. So it's based on it's based on a common feature. Yeah. Yeah, and do you mind sharing the slides? Or? Yeah, sure. Sure. Nothing to hide here. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we're almost close to the closing time. Maybe we can take one more question if anyone has. Doctor, I have a question, please, if you can allow me. Please, certainly. Uh -huh. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. First, for this wonderful and informative session. Uh, my question is that uh, can we use artificial intelligence for planning, like, for example, uh, real time optimization? For example, instead of just teaching the machine, can it tell us the next step in the future, for example, like planning, strategy? Very good question, Safe Allah. Safe Allah, no? Thank you. you know. Yes, very nice question, Safe Allah. Actually, this is a very recent trend, uh, research trend. Uh, now, if you are talking about planning and optimization, you know that uh, probably probably not everyone will follow this, but since he asked about this, we know that in optimization, usually we have an objective function and we have a set of constraints. Now, the set of constraints is what is correlate the variable to each other. And if an objective function, you need just to maximize, for example, the production, or you want to minimize the pollution. However, you need to do this while you are satisfying a constraint. Now, the constraint is where the relationship between the relationship between the variables. Now, this relationship between the variables might come from a fundamentals uh, laws like the mass balance or initial balance or thermodynamics or 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 a fundamentals uh, laws. However, sometimes you cannot actually get this relationship 
بالفاندمنتال او صعب ان انت تطلعها بالفاندمنتال لودز سو وات وات اي اي از اول اباوت اتس اباوت mapping صح mapping inputs and outputs so yes the the answer to your question we could incorporate the the ai into the into the optimization formulation if you like our optimization framework then you can you can use the ai when the ai بتدخل ai بتدخل في the constraint part because it is the constraint part where where you uh, govern the relationship between the optimization parameter problems ففي في paper on a tawni chai fa hamen min min fatra qariba where people are trying to uh, to so one planning على electricity production and they use clustering to model the demand to model that the people demand of the electricity uh, yes uh, people already started doing this Yes, clear, doctor. Thank you. Hayakallah. Um, thank you very much um, for all the questions. Um, Dr. Shams, I think we can uh, conclude um, today's lecture. Over to uh, Hussein al Wawachi if um, you have any concluding remarks. Thank you very much for your I don't have anything, just to thank Dr. Uh, Muhammad Shams for this interesting and informative lecture and we hope we'll have a part two of this uh, lecture because I, I see at the end of the lecture there is something we still we need to know more about the artificial intelligence okay. it is uh, really very very interesting thank you very much uh, Bukhari. thank you Mark very much thanks Allah a lot thanks everyone for being here with us today and listening to me thanks a lot it's my pleasure thank you Well, by this we will end the session. Thank you very much for all of you. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Nice.